So are you in the point in your manuscript whereby you've written an excellent introduction, material and metal section, and you're not quite sure or you're not certain on how you're going to present the data which you collected or even discuss this data. But do not be worried because this is quite a very common feeling among researchers, be it from the beginner, junior or advanced level. And one thing which is quite common to in the field of research and publication is that a lot of papers get to be rejected because they haven't presented the data well or they haven't discussed the data well. But you do not have to worry because in this video, I'm going to be diving and discussing how you can present your data and discuss it effectively to increase your chances of being published. But before we get into that, let's take a step back and revisit our previous videos whereby I discuss steps on how to write an excellent introduction and also steps on how to write an excellent material and method for either for a review paper, which is not quite common, or an original paper, or any paper of any sort. So if you haven't watched those videos, make sure you do go back and watch them. Or you can just check the link on the description box and also watch them to be updated. This is quite important because strengthening these steps will be very important in paving a way for a more impactful narrative as we dive into so as I mentioned before, in this video, I'm going to be discussing some very important steps you should consider when you want to present your data and discuss it in a manuscript you're preparing to submit. Hi, I'm Dr. Raj, a research professor here in South Korea. I'll be lecturing on steps, very important steps you should consider when you are preparing your manuscript for submission in order to strengthen the section for the results and the discussion for your paper to ensure clarity, to ensure that there is relevance and engagement. Please, I want you to note this note um, into consideration. You know, some papers request that um, the results and discussion session should be merged, while other papers request that the results and discussion section should be you know separated however there are also journals that do not really um, put any specific clouds on this so it doesn't matter whether you merge it or you separate it but based on my experience and expertise I highly recommend combining the results and discussion session this approach not only streamlines the right process but also helps to you know avoid unnecessary repetition of sentences resulting in more coherent and impactful narrative so let's dive into the craft of writing the results and discussion session the first step which you should consider is to organize your results start by organizing your results and writing them logically you should ensure that you present them in a way which is very clear and concise and you can do this by using tables you can use graphs you can use figures where appropriate and you should ensure that the results are quite easy to understand and follow one thing which i want you to note to take note is that um the difference between data and results because i'm going to be talking about it a lot as we go through the data refers to facts numbers which you collected from your research why the results refer to text presenting the meaning of your research it's very important you know this so when presenting your results using figures and tables so what the figures and tables do is that they actually present the information from your research visually because there are some people when they read it's a little bit difficult for them to comprehend because English is not their first language so they'll prefer using figures in order to properly understand so when you present your research data in the form of figures and tables organize the data on a step or in a manner that will lead into a conclusion so if you're using figures if you're using figures there are a couple of elements that you should consider the figure numbers the figure title the figure legend 
for example, a brief title, experiment, or statistical information, or definition of, uh, of symbols, then the data, and then the labels. For the table, in the case of a table, a table too is also a way you can visually present your results. So the table in the table section, you have to show, you can show the table number, the table title, the row heading, the column heading, data subheading, column subheading, and footnotes. So all of these can present a lot of information visually which will assist the reader or the reviewers to understand your logic in your study within a very short period of time. The second step is that you should stick to the main findings. Highlight the most important findings of your study. Focus on the results that are directly relevant to your research questions or hypotheses. You should avoid including irrelevant or tangible information. In fact, stick it still in line with this. Make sure that there is no mismatch between the tables the figure number in the text and in the table sometimes people have you might collect a lot of data within 10 years period and because you have a lot of data within 10 years period you might be expected to put it within five sentences in order for you to present that data within five sentences you can use a table you summarize it within a table and then you cite it you cite it within uh, the text when presenting your results. It's very important you have that in mind. The third step, third step is that you should provide enough detail, enough detail. You should be able to describe your results in a sufficient detail that will allow the reader to understand and interpret them clearly. It shouldn't be difficult for people to really understand what you are talking about. However, you should avoid repeating data that are already been presented in tables or figures. For example, if you summarize data on a table, when you are now discussing it, do not keep repeating that same information. For example, if you use data on a table, let's say you're summarizing the amount of soil carbon collected, and you found that in one layer is 20, second layer is 30, third layer is 40. When you go on writing on the text, you shouldn't say on the first layer is 20, second layer is 30. Repeating that makes it boring and cumbersome. That's why from the beginning I mentioned it's preferable you combine the results and the discussion to avoid repetition. So, and when you do that, um, instead what you do is when you do that instead what you do is you, you should outline key tr key trends patterns or relationships so it's very important you, you ensure that when you're writing so you should ensure that the match results with the research um research question which you didn't mention at the introduction go line in line your results should be able to answer those questions or research questions or objectives a lot of researchers when they come at the results and discussion section they just write without ensuring that that question is being answered the fourth thing is that interpret your results so while discussing the data interpret the meaning of your results explain their significance in the context of existing literature and theological frameworks so you should discuss any unexpected findings and their potential implications. So the next point which I'm going to talk about is to compare your result, which is number five. You should compare your findings with previous results. Identify similarities, look for differences, and discuss the possible reasons for the discrepancies. This will, you know, help to contextualize your results and contribute to the broader scientific understanding of the topic. So comparing is one of the easiest way you can discuss your results you're not einstein whereby you're trying to see okay my results are you know the best in the world people don't want to see that they want to see compare or if your findings are the first findings why do you think 
it is the first you should be able to stipulate or mention that also in discussion discussing your data and um, um, your data and results you should the sixth thing seat number six thing is that you should acknowledge the limitations of your study it's very it's 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 humble in science when you acknowledge or accept that your study has some limitation. You acknowledge any limitations of your study that may have affected your results. They could, this could include the methodological um, uh, difficulties, the sample size limitations, or other factors that may influence the outcome. Discuss how these limitations have impacted the interpretation of your study. For example, usually when we're comparing different land use different land use types for example you might want to compare the crop use in a uh, crop and forest and sometimes it's very it to have a logical or an excellent comparison let's say you want to compare um change in time 100 years how change in 100 years has impacted let's say um how the application of fertilizers in soils has impacted the growth of um, let's say um, maize for 10 years you might want to compare two different line use one in one use you have saw the growth of maize for just one year in another one you have the growth of maize in 20 years so because if they are not within the same the same geographical region it might be difficult they might differ in terms of climatic conditions but since you want to compare you could mention that they differ in terms of climatic conditions so there was something you did in order to ensure that it's very important you mention the limitation of your study before the reviewers do um, identify those limitations and reject your paper also you should consider number seven yeah number seven consider also alternative explanations discuss alternative explanations for your results consider other factors or variables that may influence the outcome you should um, explore possible mechanisms online these observations so for example if you found that there were there was a lot of microplastics in your soils and a lot of studies most of the time say it's usually due to plastic merging true but what could be the other alternative it could be maybe due to the area whereby the the, the, the crop field is found you could have cars passing by so the plastics from the car tires might migrate into it always consider alternative um alternative things it could, could be something that will bring in you know um that makes your study exciting to read number eight is highlight the novelty or the contributions what is the new thing that your study is bringing in you should clearly articulate the, the new aspect of your findings and the contributions in the field explain how your study has added to the existing knowledge and advanced understanding in the field my new science all the time needs innovation so if they keep doing repetitive studies same and same and same and same a lot of editors or journals do not really like that so even though i mentioned before you compare with previous studies similarity differences you could mention what is a new thing in your study and it doesn't necessarily need to be something too big if you want to know how to introduce a new thing into your study make sure you watch the video where i talked about how to write an excellent introduction so you could get some tips from there and add it onto this the ninth step is that you need to conclude concisely summarize the key findings of your results and their implications in a concise manner and then avoid introducing new ideas or reiterating points already discussed so you shouldn't be introducing new ideas a lot of new ideas in the introduction section you should only revolve around things that you've already mentioned in the introduction here in the discussion 
um, data session and then you need to main number 10 is you need to maintain objectivity so remain objective avoid overstating the significance of your results acknowledge any uncertainties or limitations and present a balanced interpretation of the findings so you st still in line with this still in line with this you, you should only present data that is supported by this the data that supports the significance of your study so you shouldn't provide data which you will not discuss if you provide data which you will not be able to discuss mind you it's going to come up during this phase of review and if you're not able to back that your paper might be rejected so if you're able to follow all these steps then you're able i can tell you congrats Congratulations, you've learned how you can write a good uh, result and discussion session. And by implementing these steps, you'll be well on your own to increase your credibility, showcase your research talent, and maximize your chances of publication. And if you found this very interesting and very useful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe for more videos and see you again in our next video and thanks for watching and best of luck in your publication journey bye